What's up, V2 crew? This is Unknown here, and this is going to be another episode talking about why I quit the trophy achievement scene. And this topic is going to be on what I like to deem as non-gaming. Now, a lot of quote-unquote games I was playing didn't really feel like I was playing a game. And this would be a variety of factors. And I think I've talked about this subject briefly in a past video, but we'll delve a little deeper into it here. For a lot of the games that I was playing, heck, almost every single one of them, it boiled down to a few things that were just making the game really easy or just basically spoiling the game outright for me. I mean, I would just copy routes and solutions from guides from the get-go. There was no discovering anything myself because that would just take more time discovering the optimal routes and things, you know? And it caused so many spoilers and there was the worst guides to follow, the video guides where you had to like do everything to a T follow in the video and then you get lost and you'd have to rewind the video watch it again rewind the video watch it again oh it was not very interesting like you would just put an ipad or something next to your setup and just basically try to mimic whatever was going on in the video and then there'd be other things such as setting up just turbo controllers and playing games that would auto-run, such as um, Telltale games. And some of the games with turbo controllers, I would just set it up, go to sleep, wake up, have the 10,000 hits or whatever, 10,000 kills done. You know, I mean, that's not even gaming, really. It's just setting up things to hit inputs for you, right? And... And then stuff like the Telltales, you just let it default to option null or whatever it was. It's like the top option would always be stay silent or something. So you'd just be earning trophies without doing anything, right? How gaming is that? And then there was also, in regards to VNs, visual novels, you would just set up a skip function, skip through, pick whatever answer a guide told you to do, and rinse and repeat, make a save here, load the save. Again, you're not experiencing the visual novel. I mean, I guess you're visually seeing stuff happen on your screen. I think you're missing the novel part, though. Only one half of that equation. And then there were games that would be actual gameplay. However, it would be resulting in using exploits or cheesing the way through the game, such as activating invincibility. So all you had to do was just powerhouse tank your way from left to right through the level. Who cares what shoots at me? Just finish the level, basically. And then there was things like abusing save states. You know, make a little bit of progress, make a save. Oh, I got hit here, download the save, go back in, make a little tiny bit of progress, make a save, get hit, oh shoot, load the save, get hit, oh shoot, load the save, die, reload, until like a little bit of progress, make another save and just inch your way through it. That was kind of annoying as well. And oh, debug modes too. There'd be some games like Jack 2, for instance. The entire game, you just open up debug mode and then you can get the plat in like 5 to 10 minutes. Now, I actually did plat Jack 2 three times before this debug mode was discovered. But nonetheless, I'm setting it up as an example. And then like, just tons of people got the Jack 2 plat after that, I remember. Because it wasn't even that, it wasn't like a super hard plat, but there were some annoying parts to it. And it was kind of lengthy too. It was like 12 hours long or something. 
And then debug mode is found out and just like everyone gets the plat for it in 5-10 minutes, you know. Uh, other things, oh, getting carried through games. So you would just join some higher level player in some game that had multiplayer or someone that had some Minecraft world set up for you and they would just carry you through the levels just so you get the trophy, you just run behind them or dodge, stay behind this cover while we do everything. There was also then the playing of quote unquote games that would take five minutes to plat where you barely had to do anything whatsoever in the game or it was like solve one puzzle do the same puzzle 10 times done or just copy puzzle solutions from a guide like i like the pcross games like i legit like them because i'm a nerd like that or strange or weird and i like number puzzles but you could just like look up the answers, look up the solutions, and just copy what was written down on a screen somewhere, you know? And then there's things like rewind features and stuff in games. And sure, you don't have to use the methods. You can actually play the games legit, or if you want to call it legit. Now, I actually did play a lot of the P-Cross games and the puzzle games. I did like to do them without guides. But other things, it would just be super tempting to have something there, right? And with earning so many trophies as fast as I could and being in that mindset, it just makes you almost lazy to just look up the guide or use the abilities to get the trophy, activate that invincibility, just so you could churn through the games because your patience level gets lowered and... You gotta get through the game as fast as possible, you know? And then the other thing, too, I'm not only talking in regards to games with super fast plats or games you could use guides for, but other games as well, it was basically me playing trophy lists and not the game itself. Well, maybe not fully the game itself, because it would just be look at the trophy list, make sure you're doing what the trophies tell you. And this would do things like spoil things for me, what's coming up, what power-ups are going to come up, maybe how long the game is, and stuff like having to do random things of random grinds and avoiding games because they just had these random grinds in them that were basically not... You wouldn't normally do that in the game, right? You wouldn't drive 50,000 laps... That doesn't... I, I don't know. I was getting kind of sick of doing stuff like that. I mean, that would be setting up turbo controllers for that or something and turning that into non-gaming do. But I was basically just, like, playing trophy lists. I wasn't playing the game or playing the game how I wanted. I was not gaming on my own terms. I was gaming on the trophy list terms um, and games that would be making me just play multiplayer when I don't want to play multiplayer. But anyways, that's a tangent. I think there is another episode on all of that. And I guess lessons learned from this. Have fun with gaming, guys. I know I say it all the time. But play what's fun for you. Play how it's fun for you. And if it feels like non-gaming, is it really that fun? I... I don't know, it kind of felt like just a chore in the end. And the thing too is, I was doing these games like 8 times over, some of them, some of them 10 times over. And then it really gets dull, you know? And so, don't make it a job that you have to pay for, and it was getting unfun for me at least, so maybe it's fun for you. I can't say what's right for you, what's wrong for you, because I'm not you. It's just my take on the matter. So, I would like to know your comments on the topic down below. Have you experienced games of non-gaming? What you think of non-gaming? Um, maybe it's fun for you to non-game. I don't know. Uh, and if you'd like to join the V2 crew and subscribe, that would be awesome. I'll post some links in the description below to Twitch and Discord. 
And with that being said, everybody, have a good night, a good morning, enjoy your games, thanks so much for watching, spread the positivity, game on your own terms, you do you, and be your V2.